Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seed. Bernard Tobin back on the Corn School, joined now by uh, Matt Chappell, market agronomist for Pride Seeds. How's it going, Matt? It's going great. We got beautiful weather. We're in the mid-September now, and the corn is moving along. We're getting to the finish line. Now, one thing in the past we've talked about is the difference between a fixed and a flexed hybrid. Yeah. And I want to talk a little bit about that today because you're standing in a fixed hybrid, a plot that you guys have here at Pride. Talk about the difference between, again, fixed and flexed. When we planted the plot, we planted at 34,000. So you can see this hybrid at 34,000, nice consistent ear size, uh, you know, 14 to 16 around at best with nice consistent ear length. Then when it emerged, we thinned this corn down actually to less than 20,000 plants. So, you know, at least a foot between each stalk burn. And when I look at the 20,000 versus the 34,000, the impressive thing with this hybrid is it really hasn't changed. It's very consistent from from the low pop to the high pop. So this would be a hybrid that we identify as a, a fixed ear style. So the main thing here, what we know about these hybrids is with a fixed hybrid, it's a hybrid that you would place on those more productive soils. Uh, soils that have nutrient holding capacity, a farm that you're gonna spray a fungicide on to try to maximize the, the potential of a hybrid. So really your high management, you can push the population on them and you're gonna maximize your return on your seed investment. What about flex? You've got a couple of flex deers. For me, this is that hybrid that goes anywhere, okay? It goes to many different farming practices. When you look at it on the, on the low population burn, so less than 20,000 plants, it flexes out. We get 18 around, we get up to 40 long. So pretty impressive what it can do at low populations. So maybe, uh, you know, a farm that's pretty heavy clay, it doesn't have the ability to get 200 bushel corn, maybe 160 is kind of an average. This is a hybrid that'll really give you a max return on investment because when we look at that higher population, 34,000, we shorten it up quite a bit. You know, we're only 16 around and we're more like 30 long on this hybrid. So Matt, let's talk yield. Awesome. If I make a decision to use a fixed hybrid and put it in, in the right environment and uh, use a flexed hybrid and put that in the right environment, yeah. what type of yield advantage can I realize? Yeah, so typically when we look at this fixed hybrid and we're pushing it in that 34, 36,000 range, we can really uh, maximize the yield potential and get, you know, 20 extra bushel over that, uh, that flex hybrid that's really going to want to shorten up. And on the contrary, when we take that flex hybrid, we put it in its right element, you know, we cut back the population 30, 32,000 that's gonna give us an advantage over this fixed hybrid quite, quite nicely. You know, we can experience, you know, on the contrary, 20 bushel advantage that way. So Matt, this fall, if I'm a grower and I'm looking to put fixed and flexed hybrids in the right place, what should I do? Information in the seed guide? What kind of type of conversation should, should I have with a seed salesman like you? Oh, that's an awesome question, Burn. Every fall we go through seed selection time, it's probably one of the daunting tasks for growers, eh? Like, uh, knowing what to grow. They want to maximize the return on seed investment. It's a big investment we always make. And I really think that knowing your field history, knowing your crop potential is the key when you come to talk to your seed dealer. Uh, talking to the seed dealer and looking in the seed guide, you know, seed guide usually identifies hybrids uh, by population tolerances. So those flexed hybrids usually show a, a lower population tolerance uh, and the fixed hybrids would show 32, 34,000 plus in that uh, population range. So that's always going to be an important uh, a tool to look at when you have that conversation and identify what farms maybe you're going to push, the ones that have that maximum yield potential, and what farms you scale back, maybe choose a different hybrid on because they're, you know, they don't have that yield potential and you want to be able to maintain a nice ear size on that lower population. So 